Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this little tutorial on RNA sequencing data pre-processing that we're gonna go through. Um, my name is Bastian, I developed, developed I coded this uh, docker image that we're gonna be using and um, in this case, uh, if we quickly check, uh, we're gonna be using this NGS with data Docker image as uh, this is just just contains a set of training data from a um, sexual dimorphism study in uh, the European Aspen populus tremula, which we tend to to use in training courses as it has a number of let's say interesting quirks. So um, let's get this Docker started. In this case, I'm going to be giving uh, several options. I'm going to be giving it a name in case bad stuff happens so that I can easily get it back. Whatever code name. I will forward port 80, 80 to 8787 as the with data tagged image of this uh, NGS docker uh, contains a Apache server. So that we can easily view HTML files, which are, for instance, produced by FastQC. I will also be adding uh, minus T and minus I for a, a terminal, since I've been using a terminal in interactive mode. So let's just put the correct Docker image, and immediately I'm just gonna log in into this Docker and switch user with the login option to the training user. This should start Apache. Apache complains that it can't find a qualified, fully qualified domain name, which is fine since we, we don't really need that. Uh, so this this web server, Apache, is we're gonna be using it mainly to look at HTML files which are produced by um, FastQC. So in in the in our case we can go to watson.plantfus.umi.se and this port we've been forwarding our session to and if we go there we see it's just listing the docker images home directory so if we list the home directory with the ll alias then we see that that would show up in the docker uh, on the web page. So to get started, uh, we have a set of training data in this uh, data raw folder. Um, these are fastq reads. It's a subset from the actual read set so that we don't spend hours and hours here watching the computer process files. Uh, these are paired end reads. Illumina, HiSeq, 2000 machine, paired and 100 and one base basis sequencing data. So uh, these are from different sexed individuals. So as part of this sexual dimorphism study, there is also a differential expression study of this paper, uh, which basically uses um, several replicates um, of biological replicates of males and females. Uh, to find out if there are differentially expressed genes between males and females of the European Aspen. So, um, uh, as we sometimes do, most of the time actually, do in courses that we, you will get a group number and each group gets one forward and reverse, one sample to process, and in the end we combine our efforts when we do the differential expression part. Uh, so I, I will show with with two of these files actually two two and two oh seven just um, to to get some some idea of a male and a female. So first first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make copies of the of the uh, FastQ files since we never ever want to work on the raw source data, and you can see I'm just copy this dataset, I'm using this wildcard here, so it refers to both 
the forward and the reverse file and I'm copying it into the current directory which is the home directory of the docker image and don't worry you since it's a docker image even if you mess things up it's very easy to recover from it since it, it will never really keep state in, in this case it, it can always be reset so we have 202 and 207 and the first thing that we're gonna do the first thing that everyone should do on uh, on receiving their data is performing quality control for this we have installed the fastqc tool um, simon andrews lab uh, it's all uh, referenced and linked in the comment and in the the markdown the readme of the docker hub so if we do fastqc minus h we get a list of available options in this case we're mainly only interested to set an output directory and to also no extract is the default option since we're not running in interactive mode otherwise we would want to specify that and d minus t option as well to make use of parallelization if you have something like a dual core computer that has hyper threading enabled then you can set this minus t to at four and the maximum which I suppose most of you have. So here we're working actually on one of our servers, which has uh, four eight-core processors with hyper-threading, which gives us a maximum available of 64 threads that we can use. Uh, we're not going to be using all of those, but just in case we have some sort of speed issues here, we could set it up that high. So. I'm gonna make a directory called QC. Actually, I'm gonna make more directories because we're gonna be doing QC after every step that modifies the data. We're gonna talk about this in a little while, but as we are also doing rRNA sorting, we are going to be trimming if we're not happy with how the quality looks. Then we want to do a QC step after all of this to just verify that we're not introducing any any bias, any issues in the data. Which brings us to a small talk on there is this debate ongoing in the scientific community if these rRNA sorting and trimming are actually don't bring more detriment than advantage. Uh, in the pipeline, which we are currently using, it's also linked in the Docker Hub, so in this pipeline, we are usually, we say it's it's a judgment call. If you do see a severe bias for high GC content data, then you at this point you would like to know and filter out this majority of possibly ribosomal RNA. And if your data is of, of bad quality, you want to trim away these reads in most cases. But as as we say, it is a judgment call, and if the, the quality looks good, obviously there is no need for any sort of trimming. But before that, let's just... Um, so I'm going to run fastqc with four threads. So actually, let's set that to eight, so that we don't watch for too long. Uh, I'm going to be setting the output directory to qc and raw. And I can just specify fastqc, you can give it any number of fastq files as an, as an option. So I'm just going to say star.fq.gc, so which will process now all of these fastq files in my home folder. And since it's just roughly a million reads that have been subset, this is going to be very, very quick uh, on your actual data, which has probably tens of millions to hundreds of millions reads. If your group can afford it, uh, then this will be significantly slower. So, home. If we now go back to our little tiny Apache server, we see that this QC directory has magically appeared, and within the QC and raw, FastQC has now saved the report for each file as an HTML page, and 
all of the data of the HTML page is also contained in the zip archive in case you want to use single plots and so on and so on for your report. So let's pick the 202 forward read. First of all, basic statistics. And before we go much more in detail for all of these, I'm going to ask you to ignore the check mark or the cross check here because most of this is actually um, this is made for uh, genome assembly and genome sequencing. So here we're doing transcriptome sequencing, which some of these do not apply as well, especially especially the KMR content and the sequence duplication levels are a bit different. In, in terms of what is expected from your data. So there is no need for worrying in many cases if, for instance, the KMR content shows up as, as worrisome or the sequence duplication level. So basic statistics. We get our file name, we get our file type, we get the encoding. This is going to be quite important for most down many downstream tools nowadays. So Illumina 1.5 which is a FRED encoding of FRED64. FRED is the quality encoding. Um, so a FRED score is basically minus 10 times the log of the base 10 of the probability that the read is erroneous, not a read, a base in this case. So the base call of, so for instance, if the first base here in our example read has a red score of 30, that's minus 10, log 10 of the error rate. So a FRED score is actually quite simple. A FRED score of 10 means there's a chance of 1 in 10 that it is, and that this base is erroneously called. A FRED score of 20 means 1 in 100. A FRED score of 30 means 1 in 1000. And a FRED score of 40 is 1 in 10,000, which is pretty much as as confident as you're going to get with Illumina sequencing. And so what we see here is in this plot, per base sequence quality, we get from FastQC the position in the read versus the, um, it's actually the other way around, the red score versus the position in the read as box plots. So the red bar is the median, the blue line is the mean, you have your box plot. So this is the 25th percentile, the 75th percentile. So what you see here, and this is very typical for Illumina sequencing reads, is that towards the end, towards the later cycles of the machine, you see a clear, somewhat clear decline. Um, neuro Illumina chemistry has actually improved this a lot. So on neuro sequencing data, you might not, it might not look like this at all, but we, we included this data set precisely because it has these, because it looks like this. So later cycles do have uh, some decline. What you can also observe is that the very early bases that you see one, two, three, Steep incline, one, two, three, steep incline, or five, in this case, steep incline. And this is where actually the sequencing machine has its calibration runs. So you get this, then it calibrates itself, calibrates itself, and then there is a more, a less stepwise decline. So fertile sequencing quality. So if, if you think of uh, coordinates, on the on the sequencing tile the chips uh you could see maybe if there was something like an air bubble on your illumina chip then there would be a somewhat of a red dot here for instance which can be quite helpful in in finding out where these quality issues can arise from per sequence quality scores so what we hear, what we have here is just really a mean sequence quality the FRED score again of the reads. So we see that the average of every base of the reads 
is there is a peak at 37 30 37 38 which is a quite high this is what we want to see and this already shows us that our our sequencing run has been more or less successful i've seen way way worse sequencing runs and this is definitely this is definitely good enough um her base sequencing content here is something that is quite interesting with illumina is that you can see that what you would expect is that the the um nucleotides in the position of the read would be roughly evenly distributed between a and t and uh, g and z but the first few bases in illumina sequence data tend to show a very messy pattern and the reason for this is that illumina have this when they construct the cdna from the rna there is a random hexamer priming step so it turns out that these random hexamers are not all that random and then that there is a certain bias for for uh, some nucleotides it's not always the same bias but it's definitely not random and it's definitely not as as you would expect it from normal from your from your data but this is nothing to be worried about and this is one of these cases where if this was dna sequencing and data and not rna sequencing data this would be that a definite cause for concern and the little x that fasqc gives us to indicate that there is a problem would be very valid but since this is coming from rna sequencing data this is not a big issue since this is expected this is known for illumina sequencing data this will exist in almost every data set and it's not a huge issue per sequence gc content so we get the mean gc contents of each of the sequences and we plot the distribution so as you can see they are approximately normally distributed uh what this what uh, several things are actually noteworthy here so if you have the the main factor here that could influence a lot of your data is rna um rrna contamination if you would have rrna contamination you would see a either a total shift of the of your uh, curve to the right towards higher gc rrnas are known to have quite high gc contents or you would see something like a shoulder here which could also so total shifts and shoulders could also uh, indicate contamination with for instance species that do have quite high gc in in their genome um like fungi for instance uh, what's further noteworthy is that the theoretical distribution um, you should not rely 100% on this it is it is modeled from your data and it is fastqc doesn't know anything about your genome it cannot model the theoretical distribution according to the genome of the species that you're working with so uh, this plot is is more of a best guess kind of situation but i've i've seen it being off in in several cases that doesn't mean that it's not not so that you sh you shouldn't take it as a as a somewhat good indicator but i wouldn't blindly trust it uh we we're, we're going to see this plot change slightly when we do our RNA filtering and later on quality trimming, so keep that in mind. Uh, per base N content is pretty much zero all the way through. So if the sequencer cannot call a base, he will, he, it will uh, just put an N there, and this would show up here if there would be any, for instance, in the early or late positions of the sequence, if there would be any 
are problems in calling the, the basis. The sequence length distribution, all of our data is 101 base pairs exactly. This is from a sequencing institute in Stockholm called SciLife, Science for Life Lab. They have sequenced this and this is how they deliver the data. So all the reads are exactly 101 base pairs without the single deviation. Next, uh, sequence duplication levels. So this is a quite curious case for DNA and RNA sequencing, where there is again a little bit of difference. The reason why we look at this in the first place is that Illumina sequencing involves PCR. PCR can cause duplications of a single sequence. Now, if you think yeah, of the same sequence over and over again, so optical duplicates in your data, if you do something, for instance, like you do chip seek and you have this PCR amplification and it over amplifies some, some part of your chip seek, then this is it's going to look later on in the analysis as if this part was highly, highly targeted by your protein of interest. Or in RNA sequencing, it would look as if this gene that was overamplified would be highly expressed in your data set, and so on and so on. So we definitely wouldn't want to see extremely high uh, duplication levels here. But what we see here is that there is a little tiny peak here at, um, so between 10 and 50 in this bin of data. But for RNA sequencing data, it's somewhat expected. You, if you think of the fact that you're sequencing your genes there is not so much in the in the transcripts to choose from in terms of random positions to sequence. So the fragments that you might end up with actually duplicated fragments that have not arisen from false PCR over amplification, but rather from a biological for a biological reason in that it that they are actually there and that you're not introducing a bias. This is quite difficult to assess, but in the end, if you're not seeing any really high peaks, really strange patterns here, there is nothing to be worried about. Uh, if you are worried about this, then there is also PCAR tools which can be used to deduplicate, but it is really not recommended if you if the plot looks quite normal. And if you're quite worried about this, I would consult some a bioinformatician in general if you're worried about any anything anywhere consult your nearest bioinformatician and have them tell you the best course of action next we have overrepresented sequences so there is a true seek adapter that has been sequenced quite a lot uh, and in full honesty i did artificially some of this into the data set just to, to show students when we're doing this that how this works. So if you have overrepresented sequences, then uh, FASQC detects them if they are within the first 200,000 sequences in the FASTA file, which if they're overrepresented, they should be as the FASTA file should be in, in no particular order. So pretty much random. Uh, adapter content per position in read. Quite normal to have the adapters towards the beginning end. And here as well, K more content. Um, I wouldn't be bothering too much with this plot if, uh, if we're doing RNA sequencing. Uh, if you are doing DNA sequencing and or you are looking at something like assembly as well, then you're obviously more interested in KMERS. Uh, I'm not going to discuss this much, but for RNA sequencing data, this is, this is not such a relevant plot. So, let's continue. Uh, next, 
on the agenda it would be rRNA sorting. So we observe that there is a slight trend of our GC content towards higher GC content. So just in case um, we are going to run sort me RNA, like this sort me RNA, uh, which is a tool for rRNA filtering. Uh, does this by alignment um, to our RNA databases. So the general syntax is sort me RNA, the reference databases and indices. We already pre-indexed all of the databases in the Docker. The reads file, one thing that you notice here is, or that's important to mention here, is that the reads file has to be a single file faster or fast queue. So for our parent data, we are going to have to merge these into a single file. Uh, sort of RNA comes with a, a quick shell script to do this. And the aligned parameter, which is going to be outputting the sequences that actually match the rRNA. So these, these are our rRNA sequences. Um, if we also want to output the ones that are not rRNA, which we definitely want since these are the ones that we're going to be continuing with, we are also going to be, we would also want the other option. So rejected reads, these are definitely not, or definitely not, these are not matching to any of the rRNA databases of sort me RNA. The output format, well, in this case, we're going to choose FastX which will be fastq as the input is fastq. And one more option paired in is going to be relevant for us, which means that if one of the paired end reads matches our RNA, both of them go into the uh, aligned output read. So both of them are going to go into the R RNA kind of reads and not into the ones that we are going to continue with. This is relevant for several reasons, but most importantly, both of them uh, both of them go, so we keep the, the paired nest of our data intact, and there is there are no things where there is in the forward read there is one that doesn't have the mate, which many, many tools dislike very much. So I, I created an environment variable beforehand called sort me RNA DB, which is this very long list that contains all of the sort me RNAs uh, databases and indices in within the, the Docker. So this is what we're going to be using to, to align with. Um, but beforehand, as mentioned before, we have to merge our forward and reverse into a single interleaved file where basically read one um, first, read one, read two, read one, read two of the next sequence and so on and so on. Uh, for this we need to first unzip our compressed data. Gonna use gunzip to just unzip all of these ASQ files. Okay, they have been uncompressed. You can see they're roughly three times the size, two and a half. Um, so now we're gonna use merge paired reads shell, dot sh, um, which has a very simple syntax: merge paired reads dot sh, the forward reads, the reverse reads, and whatever you want to call your output. So merge then to oh, two forward. 202 reverse and we're gonna call this whole single file merged.fq. It is going to be relatively quick to merge those two. Um at this point we also we also can have a look at the first queue format. I think most of you should be familiar with it. If we use more to just have a quick look at the fastq format. Um, one read always spans four lines. 
First, we have the read ID, which contains information about the platform, the coordinates of where it was on the chip. And here in the end, for instance, slash one is an indicator of the, the orientation. So for paired and reads slash one, we have the forward read here. And in the reverse file, there is going to be one read that has the exact same ID except for slash two here in the end. Obviously the sequence. The strand, which is always going to be a plus if you're using the Illumina protocol for stranded sequencing, it's still going to be plus except for that you are certain now that it is from the plus strand. Uh, in this case, this is not strand specific data, so we the this is pretty much of no importance to us at all. So here we have red sixty four encoded quality scales. So if you are the investigative type, you can go ahead now and look up an ASCII table and go 64 offset, look up the number of the underscore subtract 64, and there you have your FRED scaled quality score. And the next read and so on and so on. Now, if we look at the merged file, you can see we have the forward read and the reverse read interleaved. It's as simple as that. And now we can go ahead and do actually the same thing before we run certain RNA for um, the 207 individual. So 207 subset 1 subset 2 and we are going to be merging these. Uh, certain RNA will take a while. So I guess I will be cutting this out of the video later. So as we said from before, sort me RNA, we have all of our refs in this highly convenient sort me RNA DB variable, which saves us a lot of typing. We have our reads. So now we're going to give it, we're going to start with 202 and here the merged files paired in is what we want, we want. So here we, um, minus a defines the threads, the number of threads for sort mRNA. I'm giving it 16 to just make this a little bit quicker. We also want it to output a log file. Uh, it doesn't have to, actually it doesn't have to be verbose. So let's delete uh, minus v. And the output format should be fastx. Am I forgetting anything? Oh yeah, so aligned is where we are be where we're going to be having the rRNA reads. Um, we're just gonna give the base name and uh RNA will put the file ending for us depending on what we choose here, so .fq, .fa, .sam, whatever. And of course the other, which is going to be our dataset, which is free of our RNA. So usually we just call each step that the data has been manipulated with just by the tool that has been used to manipulate it. So to two subsets sort me RNA. And let's see if there was a typo. It does not seem like it. Now this will definitely take a while. Okay, welcome back. Ask uh, sort me RNA just got done in roughly 10 ish minutes for both of these files. So we have now in our home folder all of the um, sort me RNA output for both of the samples that we're going to be analyzing. 
And the first thing that I, I like to do is just use unmerge paired reads dot sh to perform the reverse action as we did before. So we're going to take the interleaved output file of sort me RNA and make uh, a forward and reverse file out of it again. Just because um, all the downstream tools that we're going to be using are going to be expecting this format and not an interleaved one. So we unmerge our data and after that the next step as discussed before is again QC. So as we are manipulating the source state route that we're using we're going to be running passqc again and this then compare what changed from before so now we have subset sort me rna one two so we have the r rna which are um the hits for rna in the database if you're interested just take one of these r rna hits um Take the sequence, blast it, NCBI, and you will you will definitely find some rRNA sequence of many many species. So we're gonna be doing the same for two or two. So unmerge instead of two or two, we're gonna be using uh, two or seven. We have two or two. <clears throat> and then after that we're going to be cleaner and cleaning up a little so all of these intermediate files that we're creating here so we have a merged version of the original data we have a merged version of the output data which we're never going to be using uh, or looking at again and if you have a, a significantly a large enough data set then these files can accumulate to gigabytes and gigabytes of data that you're not going to be using in any way. So this is wasted data. So let's remove everything that has merged dot fq in the end. And let's remove things that have sort me rna dot fq in the end since these are also interleaved files now we make a quick directory call it sort me rna and within this directory we move uh we can move our our data sort me rna star fq so that we don't try to move the directory inside the directory uh it will still work it's just that ubuntu would complain that you cannot move a directory inside itself which is perfectly understandable so we also move the rna data in there and as threatened before we are going to be doing QC on these files. So subset sort mRNA one, two, dot FQ. Uh, in a production environment, you probably want to gzip all of these files now since you save roughly 60-ish percent of space by doing so. So uh, I make another subdirectory in my QC folder. In this case, sort me RNA again, and we are going to be running fastqc with the output directory set to this. Sort me RNA, eight threads, and let's see for a unique pattern everything that has sort me RNA and FQ, which should give us exactly the files that we want. There we go. So we can continue to our QC folder, sort me RNA. It's not done yet. We wait a few seconds more. 
And now we should be having something. Yes. So to a two subsequent. So um the first change here is you can notice that total sequences are now less for about um two hundred thousand sequences. One hundred one hundred ten thousand. Hmm. And the GC content has also dropped by one percent. Uh, and this is, of course, so here nothing changed, the quality is still the same as it was before here. This changed a little bit, probably a size effect since we were shrinking the data. This did not change, um, this is still the same as before, this is not going to change. But here, what we observe is that this little tiny shoulder that was here at 65, 66% is gone. And the trend of our GC count per read curve is now not, not towards the higher GC content. So the trend is much more in agreement with the theoretical distribution. And this is most of the time what you are going to see. If you had some rRNA contamination in your source data and you remove it, then after doing so, this plot is the one that will that will see the most change. And for the others, we don't really we're not going to see much. We see a little bit in the camer changing. So the beginning camer is the cameras that were here in the beginning are gone, but these that were in the middle are still um are still there. So for the next step, um we're going to be working with this sort of RNA data and we're gonna be running Trimomatic. So Trimomatic um has also lots and lots of options. I, I made a a short it's actually usually a Java program, but I just made a, a small shell script that runs the Java jar or dramatic. If you want to see how to run usually you can do so in the manual. Um it has a paired end and a single end mode. We're going to be using the paired end mode and then we have to specify the encoding. We know from before it's Fred64. We can output the log file if we want, then we put um, input file 1, input file 2, output file 1, out, output, output, output file 1 for the paired, still paired reads, output file 1 for the unpaired, so the orphan files, out, and so on, and so on, so on, so on. And then in the end, we're going to be putting some trimmers, so basically what we want to trim. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using the sliding window trimmer to trim bad quality reads, the Illumina clip trimmer to uh, trim the adapter sequences and the MinLen trimmer to then trim sequences that are shorter than 50. So uh, if you want to read about all of these trimmers and how they work, you can consult the Trimomatic manual. It's, it's very well written and will tell you almost everything that you need to know. Um, threads, you can put again 8, thread 64, uh, input file 1, input file 2 is the next step. So we're going to take it from the sort me RNA folder. We can start with the, with the first file, so 202 with the numerically lower sample, input file 2. Now output file one, these names are going to be getting more and more verbose according to our naming convention, so Trimomatic. First we, we're going to get the reads that uh, still have a mate after trimming, so we're going to be calling our output this. Um, for the ones that do not have a mate we can We can do this, and the same for the reverse reads. Now for the trimmer, uh, for the trimmers. So 
in our Illumina clip, um, first is uh, the path to the faster file that contains the sequences of the adapters. For us, it's in user share dramatic adapters using TrueSeq, uh, TrueSeq 3, the paired end faster file. And then um, some, some specifications of the Uh, of the algorithm that that depend that decides if the sequence is a match. Um, read about it in the manual if you want to know more closely. Next, and the order of these matters um, for trim momentic. So these trimmers are going to be applied in order that that we're putting them here. So if it first is a hit, then it will the read will be dropped. Then if the sliding window uh, shows too low quality, it will be dropped, and then finally the minimum length. Let's see, there was a typo. No, looks good. <sighs> Extremely quick. So we have 80% where both pairs are surviving, 11% forward only surviving, and 2% reverse only surviving and in four percent of the cases everything was dropped now let's do the same for the 207 data set if you have more data i would recommend you to look up some more than one or two files, you should definitely look up some bash scripting um, knowledge so that you can automate these tasks so that you just process all of your files sequentially in something like a for loop or find exec, things like this. Exargs is also very valuable in these cases. And we changed all the numbers. So here we go, we do the same for 207. And after this is done, surprise, surprise, we're going to be running QC again. So let's make a Trimomatic directory. We move our... Now I can show you what would happen if we try to uh, move the folder within itself. Uh, move does complain that cannot move Trimomatic to be a subdirectory of itself, but all the other stuff gets moved. So if if we want to do things the dirty way, we can do like this. The same with the unpaired reads. And we make a directory in the QC folder for the Trimomatic part. And fast QC, you know this gonna be knowing these commands in your sleep soon enough. So the output folder is of course in the this is a folder of the QC folder and our source files are coming from the Trimomatic folder now. So subset uh, Trimomatic and 207 subset Trimomatic Ah forgot to put the folder. Seven dramatic uh, one two. Uh, what I forgot to mention before the log file of sort me RNA actually can be very helpful if you if you want to find out what the databases your your um your file match to. So we can actually quickly look at it. Um, these are just the algorithm parameters. These are the databases, the databases that you use. It's very good to also include these log files for reproducible science if you're doing any of these analysis. So what we can see is that for the silver eukarya 18S with identity of 95%, um, database we have the most of our hits in 5.7 percent 
of our reads actually match to this database and then almost to match to the eukarya 28. We have some bacteria, we have no archaea, unsurprisingly. So uh, it can be nice to just get this data from the log files and put it in, in a plot or in a table just to see if there are some files that are really heavily RNA contaminated and might have to be excluded. Now, PASQC is done and once again we play the game of find the HTML file. So now in the QC folder we have the Trimomatic folder and 202 subset sort me RNA Trimomatic 1 fq.pasqc and oh surprise the quality already jumps in our eyes and we can see that there is a large change in the per base sequence quality we even get the fastqc approved check mark next to it um we are left with roughly 70 something percent of our read 75 maybe so we started with 1.1 million, now we have 800,000 reads left, uh, which is always, it's sad to see reads go, but in the end our results will be that much more reliable. And again, I am actually somewhat uncertain what introduces the fertile sequence quality issues that we would be seeing now but I'm almost I'm quite certain that it's some sort of size effect since we're reducing the, the data. Um, per sequence quality scores it looks like it's worse than before but actually it's just that the plot is more zoomed in now as we are now starting on the x-axis from 25 so there is not a any any single read that has a lower average quality than 25. This will never go away as mentioned before. The GC content didn't change much since this is not something that we would expect to happen if we trim bad quality reads. Uh, the length distribution now is not perfect anymore since Trimomatic kept some reads. So we have now, not all of them are the exact same length which some tools do not like, um, as an example, Miso does not like if there are reads of different lengths. Uh, most, almost all modern software does not have a problem with these types of data. The duplication levels did not change at all, but what you can see, or there is a slight change actually, but very slight. Uh, what you can see here in the overrepresented sequences, the TrueSeq adapter is gone since that is actually one of the trimmers that we specified. So there are no overrepresented sequences, no more adapters in the adapter content plot, and the camera content plot is again changing. So, uh, Logically, the next step is mapping of our uh, source data to the genome. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using STAR. Uh, if you want to use Bowtie 2 or use Bowtie 2, there is not a really large difference of mappers. If you go for, um, you can read one. You can read several comparison papers. The main difference of STAR is the speed and it has a plethora of options that you can customize to your, so that you can customize your output for your downstream analysis, which is also why we really like to use it. Um, STAR somewhat unfortunately does not come with a minus H help option but the appendix of the star manual actually lists all of the available options. Um, you have to, first you would have to index your FASTA file, you get your genome as a FASTA file, you index it with star minus minus run mount genome generate. It's all very well described in the, um, in the 
star manual if your genome as a final point if your genome is very fragmented if you have a large number of contigs then star is gonna be using a lot a lot a lot of um, random access memory so get a high memory machine to do the genome indexing there are some parameters in the genome generate command that you can use to reduce this amount at the cost of mapping speed later on when you're using the index but if you're dealing with some genome that has several hundred thousand scaffolds then this is probably your only option to get the star index out of it in this case we have uh, we have already done this so in the reference populus trichocarpa um, in this list, there is a star directory which contains the um, which contains the index um, read files in. So I am now trying to remember all of the options by heart. Uh, read files in is our are obviously our paired and in file. So uh, to do subsets of mRNA. Trimomatic one dot fq and and the other reverse oriented read. We have the splice junction database GTF file. Uh, since star is a splice aware aligner, it is always always a good idea if you have a GFF or GTF. It actually, as far as I know, accepts both. Um, to just give star the this to make it aware of of known splice junctions, so we are going to be supplying that. Let's see, G G F. -F. So the populus trichocarpa two ten gene exons file. Um, it is actually a GFF file, so yes, it does accept, since I have tested this before. Uh, the out sam type option, we can already, newer star versions can already output a BAM file, so the binary alignment and map format sorted by coordinate, which is in almost all cases a very good idea since the feature summarization tool, the read, the read counting tool, HDSeq, that we're going to be using depends on this. Uh, BET tools can very often depend on this. Many tools for efficiency reasons want this to be sorted by coordinate and then we don't have to go through later and sort the uh, the file by actually manually using something like SAM tools. And now I am quickly stuck. So in order to control the, the output options, we also want one more option, which I'm quickly going to look up in the star manual. So, description of all options and output 20. Out file name prefix. This is exactly what we want. We want to already give a prefix so that we don't have to rename our files later. Per default, it would be aligned.out.bam. Dot sorted by coordinate ban out file name prefix is going to be subset. We can copy most of this here, and yes, that we're going to be adding a star and an underscore. I'm pretty sure this. These are most of the options that we want. So run thread n, of course, is also something that is going to be nice so that we don't have to wait. 
so long. Now let's see if I made a typo. Uh, seems correct. And what happens in Docker, and you're going to be seeing this, is a very interesting bug in uh, somehow when star completes the mapping and the sorting, we're going to be exited from the Docker. It doesn't happen in all cases. It doesn't happen always when star fails, but sometimes when it Welcome back everyone to after the mapping. It took slightly longer than I expected, which is likely related to, or almost definitely related to the fact that I was trying to save storage space when creating the Docker image. So I uh, modified some parameters when generate, generating the star genome, which reduced the mapping speed to more than I actually expected, by more than I expected. But as you can see, uh, star has created alignment files for us. So we have the 202 sample and the 207 sample. We have alignment files for these. So what, what's really nice to do with this is to just look your alignments. Uh, I'm not going to discuss format specifications of the BAM format, the SAM format, any format, actually, at this point. So what I mean by look at it is load it into a genome browser like IGV and look at the alignments. And this is precisely what we're going to do now. To do this, uh, we need to index the BAM file. It's already sorted by coordinate, which is extremely nice that STAR does this. So we just have to send tools index. We don't have to send tools sort, send tools view to make it into a BAM file, then send tools sort and so on and so on. So we just index both, both of these. Actually, star did not log me out of my Docker this time. I cannot reproduce this bug for the life of me. But it it's there. It happens at some point. I'm not lying. So what we are gonna do now? We will download the BAM files. I made a little demo folder here where I already downloaded the um, Populus Trico Carpa a genome faster file and faster index from the reference directory. This is basically what you need. You could also download the GFF file um, and also load that into IGV if you want to have a quick or if you want to have an overview of genic and non-genic regions or what, what's annotated. So let's do that and that. And at this point, I really, really sincerely hope that I picked out a male and a female in the beginning, because if I made a small error there, then I would have to redo much of this. So we quickly wait for this download to finish, which should be soon. And uh, I downloaded IGV meanwhile. So first we are going to load a genome from file and excuse the extreme mess on this computer. This is actually one of my personal experimentation random things computers. So there is a lot of random stuff here. Uh, be sure to load the correct files here. You don't want to load the index files. So for the genome, we load the faster, not the faster index. For the alignment, we load the BAM file, not the BAM index. So from file. And it does not remember where it is. So 207. Now it does. Okay. Thanks. And uh, 202 and 207. Uh, while Star was aligning, I did one more thing. I also went to the paper of the, the source data, uh, Robinson and the Lom et al. 2014, where uh, this, this was actually performed. So between males and females, there is one region where there is 
actually quite a difference in in genome alignment. So this is on on the chromosome nineteen between uh, roughly six point five five megabases and six point five six megabases. So obviously this is this would be the place to go to six five five. Et voila. Uh, now, if we if we compare with what is discussed here in this plot, that the males show uh, significantly more alignment to this gene. There is actually a gene in this region um, called by this beautiful populus trichocarpa identifier. Uh, if we consider that males tend to have this gene while females do not show any any alignment to the at least a large part of this gene, there is some alignment of uh, reads from female samples to a truncated the last few exons here, but there is zero or almost zero to the first few parts of it, which makes it, in this case, somewhat easy to identify the male here, which is 207, and this makes me very happy, because that means I actually chose a male and a female. Uh, in case you've never looked at an IGV plot before, you can see here the read alignments, the orientation of the read is denoted by the little arrow. Um, here are reads that Ban exon intron junctions, the intron being denoted by this little small, this small line. Uh, if you want to read more about it, you can just read within IGV. It's not the point of this video to discuss this much more, but what's really nice is that we do see a good alignment of several reads of the male sample to this this region while the female has two fish and these two reads that align are exactly aligning to this later part of the gene not to the first where there is absolutely very little very limited alignment there are some but that could be false positives could be attributed to noise and so on and so on now let's close IGV. Uh, as before, we can clean up moving everything that has a star in the name into this star folder. Again, Ubuntu complaints cannot make a directory a directory of itself. But we are not doing that. So star. We have that, and for our final task in this first part of the, the tutorial, so the final part of the pre-processing, we are going to be using HTC count from the HTC um, Python package to summarize features, or more less eloquently, to count reads for us. So for in a in a differential expression study, what we are really interested in as a final result is differentially expressed genes. And to do the statistics, so to find differentially expressed genes, we need to count at some point how many reads map to this gene, how many reads map to this other gene, which is actually a little bit of a bigger problem at times than it would seem. But uh, HTC count does this for us. If we look at HTC count, uh, it has several settings. So we're going to be setting F to BAM since we does we have that. This has to be sorted by coordinate. Uh, I think it even says so somewhere in the help file here. 
So the BAM format that you're supplying has to be co coordinate sorted, otherwise you will be running into issues. Um, the other is POS. Oh, yeah, okay. So it has to be sorted by some by some value of either has to be sorted by position or sorted by name. We have sorted by position. Coordinate is position. So we have to specify that. Stranded. We don't have stranded data. Um, from the Illumina protocol, if you have stranded sequencing data with the Illumina stranded sequencing protocol, you would probably want to set this to reverse since um, the stranded is going to be reverse strand interpre interpreted. Uh, read more about this in the HTSeq documentation. We don't need to do any quality filtering for feature type. We would like to set it to exon, since this is what we want to be counting. Uh, we also created a special GFF file from the original GFF file of flattened we like to call it synthetic exons, so non-redundant exons. There is a lot more about this, why we do this, and how how it affects the final differential expression study uh, in the protocol. I don't want to go into too much detail, but this is what we're going to be using here. So it has a reduced interpretation with only non-redundant exon regions in it. Uh, and ID attribute we're going to be setting to parent. This is what we want to extract. For mode, we will be using union. Uh, read about the modes on the HTC count manual. And there we go. We, we will not be using any SAM output. So HTC count minus F, bam, minus R, sorted by position, minus S is no minus t is exon that is already set as a default that is fine minus y parent when y parent and minus m union is also the default and then alignment file so we're going to give it the alignment file of star star aligned sorted by coordinate out bam and the gff file so reference Populus trichocarba GFF. And now we can see that there is the version 3 synthetic gene models. And this produces, this will, will be used to, to count. And uh, per default, HTSeq count writes to just to the terminal. So we're going to be using the greater than operator to redirect this output into a file. Therefore, we will create a file called. These names are getting very long, but this is going to be the final step, so there is not going to be more to the file names. And let's hope this is going to be fairly quick. HTC count anyway likes to update us. So the GFF has been read, and now we just process a few of our BAM file lines and count which features they map to. And this final task I will only do for, for one of the files now, since there is no point in doing it in the other one, as we are not going to be looking at the comparison between male and female now anymore. We're just going to be preparing for the uh, differential expression in uh, next time the differential expression part so I will be redoing this anyway to prepare for that uh, we actually already have that in the docker image if you look into the data HTC folder which already has count data from the actually full data set not the subsets as just subsetting by Subsetting the reads to a depth of 1 million is not enough for a differential expression study. So therefore we, we just put the full HTSeq count files in there.
we have moved on to SAM alignment record pair processing. If I recall correctly, there are somewhere around 800,000 reads aligned for this data, for this sample. So we should be done in a few seconds. And here we go. Uh, there is a warning that there are made records mis missing for in total 30 records. Uh, this can have, there, there can be several reasons for this, and mostly data manipulation, such as trimming, for instance, or RNA. If there is some um, one made drop, the other one not, um, star, can can do that as well that there will be some singletons. So if we, for instance, go to some tools, there should be for trimming and RRNA sorting, actually we, we set the options correctly so that there should be only, only pairs kept, valid pairs. So if we, if we look into star, maybe star aligned some, for some reads that there is an alignment for one where there is no alignment for the other mate. Oh, and exactly we find 30 singletons, which means there is there is one mapped but not the other. So this is what HTC count complained here precisely. Uh, mate pairing was also ambiguous for 5,300 records. Uh, all of this is also written to the HTSIG file. So if we look into this now, we see that for each of the possible genes, Populus Trichocarpa, we get a count. And it's as simple as that. This is how many reads map to this gene. And in the tail of the file, we see that actually, 20,199 mapped to a region where there was no feature annotated in the GFF. This could be novel genes, this could be noise, um, maybe novel splice variants, extensions of the gene, and so on and so on. 20,500 were ambiguous, so maybe one... Um, this, this depends as well on the counting method so since we used union then there are some cases where there is an ambiguous map and it uh, HTC count cannot decide between one gene or the other and for 116,000 actually we had non-unique alignment so that there was not a clear um, primary alignment so so-called multi-mapping reads from the aligner if there are for instance highly similar genes, highly similar regions, then the aligner can have um, multi-mapping and usually the default pipeline is to just, especially if you're just looking at a gene level and not the differential exon usage study and the likes, that the default would be to just drop the reads that are not uniquely aligning and use only the uniquely aligning ones for um, for downstream processing. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention, and we'll see each other next time when we are going to go through the differential expression, the actual differential expression pipeline in R using the seq 2